YouTube. This is Ike Love and Lone Wolf Nation. I want to salute, you know, uh, this is like one of my first motivational speeches that, you know, I'm going to give for my posts. Um, this is, ba but it's going to be like based on like some of my experiences personally that I can like vouch for myself. Like I say, anything I say is based on my own reflection, uh, life reflection, experiences, and you know, you don't have to listen. You can. It doesn't matter. But, you know, I'm just putting it out there because I love everybody. Uh, but uh, from my life experiences, the positive, the negative, the setbacks, the growing patterns, the timetables, you know, it's a lot of stuff in life that we don't learn until, you know, we either come across it or maybe we got a good friend to tell us uh, or especially as young people, you know, young people, when you're young, you get out there, you pretty much, you, you, you think you know everything about life. And then you realize, man, that life is so much more. It's so many distractions anywhere between your friends, your relationship, your job. I mean, it can be stuff that you're dealing with health-wise. That, you know, all this stuff, all the strains at one time that you're going to deal with at, at, at any given time. Like, you can literally go from up here to down here back here, then back up there, and then down here again. And these are things you have to know how to take in stride. Like, you can't just give up or, you know, a lot of people, you know, like, I had a friend once tell me, like, hey, what are you going to do? You can't go dig your own grave and lay in it. So what you going to do? You got to get up. You got to keep fighting for what you want. Keep fighting for what you deserve. So, I guess I'm gonna start off with with I guess the young part, and I'm gonna try to keep this in a 15 minute range. Uh, this whole uh, vlog. Um, but what I'm gonna say is this: when when I was young, younger, I mean I had a lot of opportunities. Uh, I guess at a young age, uh, I had a lot of really serious decisions to make in life at a young age before I really should have been making those decisions. Um, I will say, like, it, it all worked out for me in the long run, but it's it the way my youth was, it created a pattern to where even today it affects me today, where everything, I have to take the long route to a round rather than to be able to take from A to B, like some of my peers. Uh, I, and I think the first thing it starts with is at home, like, I guess as parents, um, we need to try to support our kids and, and motivate them and, 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 and if they're doing the right things, uh, you know, we need to, to try to let them, I mean, stay at home as long as possible. I mean, don't set a timetable of 18 or 21. I mean, if, like I say, if they're doing the right thing, because there are things I think that people can do that you just can't deal with and that if they can't change, you know then you have to, you know, let them move on and grow, you know, growing pains called tough love and being adults. But I have noticed, like, when I look around at my friends, most most of them who was able to stay home a little longer, uh, save money, uh, maybe go to college or military or whatever, and while they had the no pressures of really the, what the real life really was. I mean, they might have been working or something like that, but didn't really have the pressures of at a young age of, oh, I got to pay rent when I'm out in the streets. So, you know, or just, just the pressures. All the, I mean, at young, it's hard for a young person to deal with that, which can also set young people back in, in negative ways, even though they might still be making it and look like they're still doing well. Um it can set them back in negative ways and have and make them actually grow bad habits from it that can set them back five years. I'm the type I believe that every bad decision that you make can affect you five years of your life. So every man, I don't think it's every bad decision, every bad or good decision that you make. So every decision that you make can affect you positively for five years or it can set you back positive uh, negatively for five years. Um so that was one of my, my things where I, I left home at a young age and um, I think probably around 16 years old, I first left my home and I actually went back for maybe a couple of months. Uh, 
after I got out of the job corps. And I think one of the things was that when I left when I when I left home and came back home, it was like some of the same problems was there from when I left. Like the reason why I left was the reason why I ended up leaving, the same issues was there when I had went back. And so it it negatively affected me, you know, to the point to where I didn't want to be in the house and it kept me running the streets, like staying outside, like pretty much all day, all night. And in a turn, it affected my work, you know, because I had a job to where I had to be to work four in the morning, five in the morning. And here, well, I don't want to be in the house. So, you know, I stayed out and hung out much and, you know, and that affected my work. So, I mean, everything is a package. Everything just don't happen A to B, A to B. You know, when there's so much going on around you, and it just messes your focus up. Not only did it do that, but it kind of messed up relationships with friends. It's like everything impacted all at one time. And, you know, I kind of did like the best thing I could was like cut off a lot of friendships. And, and I had to basically when I was put out, you know, of uh, uh, the house I was staying in. Um, and I guess it kind of made me grow up quick. And I had a couple of years where it was like some down years at a young age, like that, like I, I like I didn't really see too much hope in, in, in life period, you know, being a young person and the world being all about credit and, and, uh, it made a huge, a huge impact on my, on me as a youth, um, just feel like, like I was hopeless, you know, like, uh, I don't know. And another thing, it's like where I grew up at at the time too. That was, that was a hard part. I think if I grew up somewhere where things were some more affordable and I grew up in PG County and one of the things about PG County is very, very expensive. And I mean, even with apartment buildings, like if you make too much money, they won't even approve you for, say, like, if I was by myself, a single person, and I made, just say, 40000 I applied for a one-bedroom apartment. It's so possible that I can be denied for that one-bedroom apartment because I made too much money. And if I don't have any credit history, they might deny me for that as well. So I found myself kind of, like, living in, like, in a rooming house, and it was, like, a, a negative environment around that. So, I mean, it took a whole lot to for me to get my head on straight and one thing it was, was leaving Prince George County, getting away from all the issues that was back there and leaving and going to Baltimore, I think was like the best thing happened to me. Now, wait, you, you, know, you see, most people sit back and think, Baltimore, get anybody straight? Hey, for me, it worked um, because most of my problem was getting away from uh, people. And happened to only rely on myself. So only rely on myself and my own thinking. I was able to to basically rise up from having nothing to, you know, build myself a little uh, comfortability. Uh, you know, now I mean, I mean, I mean, it was it it was tough to get to where I am. I am now. Uh, and it took a lot of, of hard work, a lot of determination. Um, I mean, I first went to Baltimore, and, you know, I was so used to being around a lot of people back in Pittsburgh County and just having a lot of people to rely on, you know, that I went out there. It caused me the depression, you know. But at the same time, uh, I guess when I first went out there, I was motivated, right? And then where I was staying at, uh, you know when you what happens when you stay with people. And that's another thing. I, I'll do a video on that uh, another time. But when you stay with people... You know, of course, everything's by their rules and it's their house. They, they, so, you know, most of the time people are going to be really controlling. Um, I tried to stay out of the way and I was looking for a job now. Uh, and I was looking for a good job and I was actually getting good interviews. Like, I had an opportunity to get good jobs. And the person I was staying with, they wanted... They wanted me to work anywhere. You're talking about just anywhere, just settle for anything, just so they can get paid, just so they don't feel like I'm sitting around while they're working. Uh, you know, go to Walmart or whatever. Now, mind you, you go get a, a bullcrap job like that. Um, what ends up happening is it stops you from being able to have the time to search for good jobs. 
It's not about just having a job. If you really care about somebody, you wouldn't send them just to go get any kind of job. You want to get them to get something where they get on their feet if you really want to see them get on their feet. You know, like, seriously, it ain't, I mean, if you want somebody on their feet, you got to, it takes money. And Walmart is not going to get anybody on their feet. It's going to get your your butt in a rental house <laughs> if you can afford that. You know, so, um, I guess now with this minimum wage thing going up, maybe people would do a lot better. But back then, when I was doing it, you talking about in the early 2000s, you know, having a Walmart job can get you nowhere. But anyway, uh, basically they wanted me to take whatever I could, whatever I could, I mean, whatever. And so that kind of stunted my growth. So whatever the case was, they did the same thing. Uh, they want you out the house, give you a time limit, even when you started working. And I was, okay, uh, well, one thing they did good was they say save your money so you can get a place. So, yeah, save the money, but we, I still wasn't making much money. You know, but I was able to get an apartment and I was working a temp job. Temp job, I had bad credit, probably around 530 something. My credit was awful. I was stuck in, I went to, uh, I was living in West Baltimore at the time, Wilbur Junction, if anybody knows what that is. And I mean, it was, out there, it was quite an experience, you know. Um, I mean, I'm talking about you seeing people drop, like literally broad daylight, like nothing. I mean, same people in the corners every day. I mean, that when I got back over there, it kind of it depressed me because I felt like, damn, I'm going down even further than I was, you know. So I kind of like went into a, a depression. Uh, yeah, I'm lying. This video not going to be uh, to a 15 minutes. <laughs> it's going to be about 25 because I'm covering a lot here. But anyway, let me move on fast. Um, so. It kind of depressed me, and I remember looking at the my the person I was dealing with at the other time, which which was my ex girlfriend. I looked at her and I said, "You know, man, what's going on?" Because I never had experienced depression. I never knew what being depressed was. I was young. I didn't have, you know, I had a good friend, but you know, they had a lot going on for themselves. But you know, they actually, you know, talking to them after all this stuff was going on kind of helped me do better. And not kind of helped me. It absolutely helped me and really pushed me to the point where I am to this day. But I remember, um, you know, looking at my ex and just saying, hey, what's, what's going on with me? I'm like, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to do anything. It's like, man, I just feel, I feel terrible, man. It's like, I just want to just like hide in the house and just sleep and just like, I ain't really want to eat. It's like, I just... I don't know. I didn't know what that feeling was, but I knew something wasn't right. So then after a while, I realized, like, maybe I was dealing with some depression. Anyway, there was this, uh, there was this episode that used to come on, this motivational episode on Sundays, uh, Power Met Temple would come on, and, um, I guess, uh, Reverend Ch uh, Jamal Bryant, um, he had a motivational spe speech that would come on, like, on on, um, I think it was on Sundays and like 12 or something like that, I believe. I can't remember what day it, it, it was, but they always ran these uh, motivational things. It was on basic TV because I didn't have cable at the time. And so I would watch it. Then I started watching stuff on the internet or whatever. But every time it came on, it was like I felt like he was talking to me or dealing with an issue, talking about an issue that I basically had myself that I was going through or went through. And... Honestly, like hearing it, the, the, that motivational speaking, man, it got me out the rut. All of a sudden, it was like I wanted to get out the house and I went to go find a job. I went to find a job. I went to find a job and um, I think I, I went to security. Um, and I think within six months of, of getting that security job, you know, I've always been a good worker and stuff like that. And one of the people that stand out on jobs or whatever. And I mean, so that's, that's nothing new for me. But, you know, I, I basically got capped in. I got the like six months of working there. Um, and basically was running my own facility. Basically, I had no really no help. And um, it was a lot of challenges because anybody know when you in the, in, the, in the lower end of security, man, they work you like a dog. <laughs> like a dog. 
Uh, but anyway, so in within getting that captain position, I'm dealing with something else, you know, which was the person I was dealing with at the time. They ain't had their head right. So all the years I've been struggling, it was partially due to the person I was dealing with at the same time because they had the mindset of just getting by. And they had the mindset of, like, don't set goals because goals don't, you know, if you don't reach a goal, then you won't you won't be happy. Or you, it was something that she was saying, and I guess after you deal with something somehow for so long, and then you have really nobody like say, it's just crazy you hear this, and that's that was your first instinct. But after hearing it, hearing it, hearing it for years, and just getting by it, and we you know. You kind of like fall right in line with that. And so yeah, yeah, I broke my, my goals down a lot dealing with that person. Luckily, you know, when I started working that job, you know, I don't, I don't know. She took advantage of basically, I guess, uh, the time I was, I was working a lot of hours, a lot of hours, 16 hour shifts and stuff. And, you know, she decided that she wanted to move on and go a separate way with, you know, another person. And that was, and that was fine. I mean, because when I looked at it, you know, every we had been together so young. Like, I believe I started messing with this lady, girl when I was like 18 years old. And basically, we outgrew each other. My mind was on something different than her mind was on. She's more of a fun type. She wants to just have fun in life and, you know, do whatever. Goals and, and trying to be the greatest you can be. is And the pressure of that itself is not something that she wanted to be a part of. And that's something that I totally wanted to be a part of. So once I started focusing on on goals and and, and once she was gone, see I, I you know, that's a, that's another thing. Like I was telling you earlier, it's a lot of things you go through, man. Everything happens for a reason. And it was the it was the most best thing to happen when she decided that she wanted to leave. Well, it was one of those things where it was like an ultimatum and I don't wanna get into all that, but she left. She decided to leave and um, and that was the best thing that happened to me. And from there, um, I was left with a lot of financial, uh, issues. Like, I mean, a lot of bills because I was the type of, you know, I used to let her pretty much deal with the bills. I would, I would dish out the money if I had to. So I didn't really know what, what kind of bills that I really had at the time. And so, um, I paid that, you know, I had to somehow made it out of all those bills and paid back all that crap. And I moved and moving was the best thing. And moving um, kind of like helped me up the security game because when I moved, uh, the person I moved with, they actually, um, they actually, um, I guess, trained people for gun license and stuff. So I was renting like a basement apartment and stuff like that. And my basement flooded. The person gave me two phone numbers and I called the the phone number, the first phone number that they gave me, and it just run with the answer machine. So I called the second one. It was a business line, and I kind of heard on there that they basically uh, deal with gun license and stuff. And I had always wanted my gun license, um, so um, I, I, I when uh, I left, a, I, I called, I left a message on there. Basically, the uh, give me a call, you know, because basically that the area my basement had flooded. Some pump basically had overflowed during one of the little hurricanes that we had or whatever out here and um um she came down right away and you know got the water up and that but I as she we was doing that both of us was cleaning um I was talking to her like hey I'm interested in my gun license and you know and she helped me. Uh you know she came down, she trained me. She didn't now when I say help, she didn't cut any corners. You know, we went through training, everything was legit. You know, she ain't just passed me. I went to the range. I qualified, everything like that. I did everything I was supposed to do. So, um, I definitely want to hold, put that out there, that it wasn't like I was hand, handed nothing because that didn't happen. She came down. I went through a class. She gave me a book. Uh, and um, we went to the range. I qualified. Um, but anyway, that being said, uh, all that could have never had came about if... I didn't have to think. I would have never been looking for a place because, I mean, at the time, both me and my ex, we was both working and we could afford what I had living in West Baltimore. But by her leaving, it caused me to 
start looking for another place that I could afford, which was all something with all utilities included. And so I kept looking and kept looking. And the first day that this lady posted that basement apartment, I was the that was the first one to haul out of right away the first day. And I came and I actually stayed there for a couple of years. And um I grew there actually. And um me getting that government, it really changed my life. I mean and then uh so from there, you know, um that's when I met Renata when I Actually, I met Renata before when I was living in, in my other place, before I actually moved there. So, Renata, we pretty much was dealing with each other when I first moved there. Um, we had, I think we, we had a little, we bumped heads uh, off something, and we kind of like laid off for like, I don't know if it was about a year or a couple of months or something like that. And then, you know, somehow we got back in touch and we started talking again. And man, me and Renata have been together ever since, you know. Um, and I tell you one thing with this girl, I've had more good times than, than bad, I can honestly say. And she has definitely helped with trying to elevate, you know, me as well as well as me helping her elevate her life as well. Um, so everything like fell in line. And like I said, I could have never had done that. So when people, when you see these negative things, when negative things happen, don't, don't get down, just keep moving because if you keep moving, Man, it, things can get so much more positive, man. And um, so basically, um, when we left there, I left the basement apartment. When I got pregnant with Jaden, uh, Jaden now, of course, we's four years old. She left there, got pregnant with Jaden. We actually end up um, we ran uh, we rented a house, uh, rented a house, and that was some kind of experience. Uh, and that that's what made me really get interested in buying a home because. I mean, the the people were slumlords. Like, there was things they just wouldn't fix. We we had a, a hole in our floor in the basement, and we don't know how the world got there. Um, something like dug through the floor. I don't know. It was it was insane. We was dealing with mold issues, and all they did was came and brought a uh, one of those uh, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, and that's all they did. Uh, <laughs> they didn't care. Um, and so that and that really made me get interested in buying a home. So I, right then and there, I had made the, the crucial decision in my life. And this is like the one of the points of my video. Like, I said, you know what? I'm going to fix my credit, man. I'm going to fix my credit. And so I took little baby steps. Like I say, with the job and career, now I had a little bit extra money. I made a little bit more money. I was actually um, working an armed security uh, job on contracted. And I made pretty, pretty good money, I would say. Um... But I said, from here on out, I'm going to get my credit together. So every tax season, for like two tax seasons in a row, man, I just took my credit, my, uh, my, my, uh, I paid, I took my taxes and dropped it all on my, on any bills I had, any bills. After about, I say like the, I don't know, after like the, really the first time I was able to get like a small $300 credit card, uh, <laughs> with a three hundred dollar limit on it, and um, I started using that card for small stuff like gas. Uh, we go to the movies and stuff like that. Man, when I went to the movies with the kids, went to the movies, I would use it there. Um, I would I would do little stuff just to try to you know build some status with my credit card. And so the next year, uh, of course, every, every year I would just pay pay off that you know anything I had before I knew it. I, I had no debt on my um. Not on the credit card. I had at the time I was, I didn't really. Uh, well, by that time I did have. Uh, I think I had a car, so that was the only debt I had was a car, I believe. Yeah. Um, let me see. No, no, I didn't have. Well, I did get a car, but it was a little later. Um, I had a used car, so I didn't have. So I didn't have any any kind of debt at all. I just was. You know, raising my credit score was going up, going up. And I took the process, man. And before I knew it, I was getting, you know, better offers with my credit card. And I used it smart. I made sure it was nothing that I couldn't pay back right away. I had, you know, when you have your head on right, and you can you can do all the things that you want to do and do it the right way without um, sacrificing, uh, I guess, your income or your family or your food that you put in your mouth, you know. And... So from there, I built up my credit score up. I swear, when when I bought my home, my credit score was like seven eighty. Uh, 
And um, I basically got a really low interest rate or whatever. And um, now, when when I had moved from that house, because I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. When I moved from that house, I moved to an apartment at Owens Bills. I was paying sixteen fifty for a three bedroom place, and they would go up actually on me. Um, every year they would go up seventy five dollars, so it was twenty five dollars if you had a deep freezer or if you had any kind of extra appliance in your home. We had a deep freezer, so that was twenty five dollars. Every year they would go up fifty, so we kind of the rent was like was like getting up there really quick, um, and so that while I was there, I just kept on trying to you know get my credit right. And I'm buying a home, which I'm in right now. Um, I'm paying, and I'm, I'm paying like five hundred dollars less than I was paying when I was renting that. Um, when I was renting that apartment, five hundred dollars less. And I have, a, a, well, y'all seen my yard? You know, it's a three bedroom house, a single family home, privacy fence, a driveway. I got a garage. I mean. Man, what can I say? I could never have done this if I had never made that decision to to fix my credit, you know. And what it is is that when you go to buy something, you pay a lower rate, especially if you asking somebody when you're trying to like buy a home or you're trying to get a car. Now, one thing I say, some people say, "Oh yeah, save your money um, and buy a car." Yeah, that's all well and good if. You're the type of person that can sit around and wait for months and months and months and save, and then all that money that you save be gone just like that. I'd rather have all that money in the bank and pay a low payment for whatever I need, and I don't have to go broke in my drain my bank account to go get some car or something like that. I, I got all this money just sitting in my bank. What I don't have to worry about for if I have an emergency, I got that money there. If I have a bill to pay, I got that money there. I'm not saving that money just to give it away on a vehicle. I'd rather have good credit, pay low payments. And another thing, I may may have got a vehicle, but my payments is so low. So low because of my credit score. And and, and the thing is about that, I get to pay. I, I don't have to go to the, to, the, to the mechanic shop. When I was getting used cars and and and... I would constantly stay at pet boys and, and mechanic shops and, and the dealer. Well, you know, I, I bought a used car from a dealership. I constantly end up back there trying to get my car fixed. Like it cost me thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So until I started getting brand new cars that only I drove, I've never, I think it's been since I've been in a mechanic shop for something other than an oil change. It's been over probably seven to eight years. It's been a long time since I had to be at the shop for something actually gone wrong from a car, you know. So for me, I know I'm I'm doing the right thing for what I I need to do. So I'm doing what's best for me, you know. Everything don't work for everybody, and if something don't work for you, you mean keep it moving. But for me, this works out for me. You know, and um, I'm I'm actually I'm, I mean I can say I'm I'm happy. I feel I feel blessed, and uh, I'm just happy, man. That you know I, I've had friends like I I don't, I don't have a big crowd like, but I have a few friends that you know in my life that that pretty much has stayed positive and helped me along the way. And that's the another thing that I can tell you real quick about before I end this video. Man, keep people by your side. When you got good friends that 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 um, motivates you, that that they constantly trying to do better in life, you keep them by your side, man. Don't and when they tell you some of the stuff they doing, don't get jealous. Just know that you can do it too, because they your friend. Do you? They've been through you. Y'all growing up in the same areas. Y'all all been through the same stuff. Just know that you can do it too. We all can do it, man. Anything they can do, I can do. And, 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 and you have the same potential as them, you know, and, and you got to believe in yourself. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do something because you can do whatever you want to do. I feel like I've had a lot and I didn't put everything out there, all the stuff I've been through on this video. But I've been through a lot in life, man. And I'm sitting here right now, a homeowner, 
I have reliable transportation. I got everything I need for my kids. I got food. I got lights. You know, this stuff I couldn't even imagine back when I was 18 years old. I couldn't even imagine having this stuff. I couldn't even imagine. I just, you know what? I didn't care. I, I mean, my, it was to the point where my, I was like, well, if I, I mean, if I live or die today, it don't matter. Nobody's going to care. I don't care. That was my attitude, man. But it was all based on the people around you. So look at your, man, don't just look at yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror first. That's the first thing I'm asking you to do. Look yourself in the mirror. Know your worth. Know that you can have it. Sometimes, you know what I used to do? Nighttime, stuff like that. When you, you riding, just take a look. Just look around you. Look at the world. You know, when you go shopping or whenever you go. I, I like the people watch. And one thing, I, I would walk around. And I would look at places and look at houses and look at people and look at cars. And, and I would just wonder, like, you know what, man? How did they get that? What did they do to get that, man? They either went to college. I mean, you don't know somebody's story. You know, you don't know somebody's story. This this felons out there that get out of jail that do quite well for themselves. You know, they, they figure it out. You know, and, and and that's what it takes. You can't give up in life, man. Figure it out. And as a young person, know that you're going to deal with so freaking much. You know, from relationships, from 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 finding out what do you want to do, what direction you want to go in life. All this stuff is so, so tough and it's so much pressure on a young person, man, that, you know, you can fold or you can even do things that set you back, you know, even further because of the negative um, environment on the negative around you, negativity around you cause you to do negative things and actually can put you in bad situations that can set your life back five, ten years, you know. So it's so important to keep positive people around you, man, and, and to, to stay positive, keep pushing yourself, know your worth. Make sure that the person that you call your girlfriend, your wife, or your friend wants the same thing out of life than you do. And if they don't want the same thing out of life that you want, then you need to move on. You need to, 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 to get them out of your life right away. Save yourself the time because sooner or later, and what you want and they want is going to clash. So, you know, the, the faster you get them out of your life, the more, the faster you can move on and do something better with yourself. Don't just continue to suffer. Like, I know people right now who was, you know, suffering in in the year 2099, and they still in the same predicament they was there at to this day. And this is 2018. But you know why? It's because they didn't change anything about themselves. They don't believe in what they can do. They keep doing the same stuff that they was doing back then. They, they not trying to make plans. They don't make goals. You know, and, and, and that's why they still sitting where they was at. And, and like I said, I'm not knocking nobody and I don't think I'm better than nobody. But what I want to see is everybody do better because I know that for me, if I can do some of the things I have done, I know anybody can do it. You can do it. They can do it. They can do it. Anybody can do it. You just got to believe in yourself. I'm trying to tell you this life can be difficult. But it's as, you know what? It's as difficult as you make it. You know, be patient, set small goals, and you set long-term goals. And it's the truth. And I know it sounds like a broken record, but you set long-term goals and short-term goals. And as you reach some goals, and you're going to be proud of yourself. Boom, I just did it. Oh, boom, I just did that. I can't believe it. You're going to be proud of yourself. Proud of, I mean, you're going to be more, I mean, you're going to be prouder and prouder of yourself. Every goal that you reach. And... As you reach these goals, you know, you, you set new goals and you keep pushing. Keep pushing, man. Don't forget to keep pushing. And at the same time, one of the most important things, too, don't get big-headed. Keep your family first. Take care of your family. Take care of your kids. You know, just try to be do the right things. When you do the right things, you get good karma. I don't know if you believe in karma, but I can talk about that in another video. But um, I think this about wraps it up. Um. Just remember, man, if I can do it, you can too. I don't have nothing that nobody else can get. I ain't done nothing nobody else can get. I know there's people out there that, you know, don't believe in credit. But I can tell you, credit changed my life, and it's going to change my life even more. Because, I mean, one of my other goals is to become a business person and maybe get into a little bit into real estate and stuff like that. And I'm going to do things smart. And, I'm, of course, I'm going to study. And I got a lot of friends that's, doing, that's already doing it. So I can kind of, like, fall back on information they can give. But it's, I'm still setting goals. I don't, I'm nowhere to me. I'm nowhere. So, like I say, Long Wealth Nation, man, I love y'all, man. This Ike love, man. 
my first motivational video, mark it down. It's going to be more to come. I got a lot of information to give. I mean, I've been through so much, but I'm going to touch on a lot of issues as time goes on, man. Uh, Y'all take it easy, man. I love. Peace. My wife nation, stand up, man. Stand up.